I guarantee you this will not be a popular video. And the reason why it won't be a popular video is because I'm not hyping wholesaling because I'm not saying, oh, you know, make six figures in your first year and, and, you know, all this fluff and, and things to get you to buy a course or to, you know, to get you to buy something off me. I really just want to tell you the truth about real estate wholesaling. Now I love real estate and I love wholesaling, but I think you should understand what you're getting into going in. And because I've talked to people getting into wholesaling for over 10 years, I understand the subject matter better than anybody. I talk to a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people about them quitting their regular job and hopping into wholesaling and then panicking because they don't have the money to pay their bills the next month because, because maybe they were living to paycheck to paycheck or they just had a very small nest egg that they burn through really quick or other people will go out and actually borrow money against their you know home equity or on their credit cards or whatever to buy a course and then are flabbergasted when a month in, two months in, six months in, they haven't closed a deal because they got, I don't want to say suckered into getting some kind of course that overpromised them, but they fell for the, the sales pitch. Okay. So this video is don't quit your job yet. Realities of real estate wholesaling. And I want to go down and, and just talk about these things real quick about what you're getting into. If you're coming from something other than real estate, right? If you're a real estate agent and you're already used to working on commission or you're in sales or, or whatever, you understand it. But if you're coming from something completely different, le learning this job from scratch, here are the things that you need to know. Okay. Once you buy the course and once you go through the course, most courses out there are pretty good. You're going to have the basic knowledge to go out and wholesale real estate. But here are the things that you're going to encounter. Number one, analysis paralysis. Everybody does this. They're, they're, they, they, they buy a course, they buy another course, they're, they're doing all these things and they're, they're, they're trying to process too much information. Once you know the basics, do it. You've got to get out there and do it and get your feet wet and, you know, start going and, and talking to buyers and start marketing and start talking to people that are interested in their selling their house. Because I've seen people go through analysis paralysis for years. Okay. And you've, you've just got to start. You've just got to get out there and start doing it. All right. Which leads us to the to the next bullet point there. Fear of taking the first step. It is scary, right? I've been through it myself when I, you know, when I first started in a, a sales career, I was scared to do it, right? But I had I had a wife at home, I had a kid at home, and I had to do it. And and you you've got to want to do it more then the fear is telling you not to do it, right? You, you, I mean, you've got to have that burning desire in your gut to be a real estate professional, to be an investor and to get out there and do it. So you can't let that fear of taking that first step stop you. Often I tell people that they should, it should wholesale when they're starting with somebody else, even if it's a brand new person, right? Another brand new person, because that gets you over that that fear right you're doing it with somebody you've got you know some some moral moral support their safety in numbers right so teaming up with somebody else is a good way to get over that fear of taking that first step but it's something you're going to have to deal with third is imposter syndrome right you're going to say you know you know i i don't like putting myself out there as an investor uh, to sellers, right? They're, you know, I don't want to say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a wholesaler and or an investor or whatever. And I do this and, you know, and, and put yourself out there and them not believe you. Okay. Get over it. Everybody starts somewhere, right? So if, if you're afraid of being an imposter, don't be, when you talk to a seller, right? When you start talking to sellers, 
tell them that you're brand new, right? Say, hey, you know, I'm brand new in real estate investing. Matter of fact, this is the first house that I've looked at or only the third house that I looked at. But, it, you know, the numbers seem to look right and it was the kind of property I'm looking for. And, you know, uh, you know, I really love to work with you on it. They don't expect you to be some big, massive real estate investor. That's something you're putting in your own head. So, you know, my, my advice to you is don't be an imposter. Just be honest and be you, okay? Um, fear of market oversaturation. Okay. This, you're going to feel like this if you get into anything. Yeah. There's a lot, you know, if you start looking at wholesaling and you get on all the wholesaling groups and you start going to meetings and there's all these wholesalers, it seems like there's a lot of them, right? But there's only about 5% that are really doing it. All right. The other 95% are talking a big game or maybe have done one deal or two deals, but the market's not oversaturated. If you got into, if you get your real estate license, you would think the same thing. There's too many realtors. If you got into being a car salesman, it would seem like everybody you met was a car salesman. It's just because you're focusing on that thing and you're getting into the world of that thing where you think there's too many, but there's not too many. Go out in your market and be the best wholesaler in your market. And essentially there is no other competition. Okay. Fear of not finding a buyer. It's a good fear, right? Because you go out, you're marketing, you know, you don't want to get something under contract and have somebody not have somebody to flip that contract to. So here's my advice. Go find, find buyers first. That's what you should do anyway, right? You should have five buyers, 10 buyers, however many buyers in your area that you've spoken to, you're knowing they're buying consistently, that you know that if you bring them a smoking hot deal, they're going to pull the trigger on it. Okay. And that will get rid of some of that fear. Okay. Also team up maybe with another wholesaler in your area that's doing a lot of business that has a big buyer's list. So if you get a deal under contract and you can't round up your buyer yourself, you can go to them and say, hey, I've got this great deal. Do you want to JV it with me? And know that they're already, you know, prepared or interested in JVing, okay? So preparation, uh, you know, being prepared will get you over the fear of not finding a buyer. It's people that go into it, you know, guns a blazing and haven't set up a, a buyer's list that really fear that, okay? Fear of losing a deal. It happens, right? You get a deal under contract. Um, you know, you're new, you didn't calculate the numbers right, you know, or, or the, you didn't sell the, um, you know, the property owner on, you know, you were the right candidate or whatever. And they withdraw, they say, you know what, I'm not, you know, I decided not to sell to you or you get it under contract and they start ghosting you or right or whatever, whatever the case it happens. So get over it. Just, just get over the feeling of that. Okay. Because it's going to happen and, and probably there's nothing you can do about it. The next one is the fear of making phone calls. So you might go out and market, um, you know, start driving for dollars, putting notes on the door and have sellers or property owners start calling you and you're afraid to call them back or your, you know, your virtual, uh, you know, cold calling or wholesaling or marketing, and you're just afraid to pick up the phone and call. The only way to get over that is to actually do it, right? You, you, you just have to practice it. You have to pick up the call and call sellers, call buyers and just do it. And you might be scared at first. They, you're going to sound more scared to yourself than you are to them. What I often advise on this is to get on Craigslist, go to a different city, different market. So if you're in Michigan, go to Texas, go to Dallas, uh, get on Craigslist, go in the real estate section, look at all the for sale by owners and start calling them and ask them about their house and just get used to making that phone call. If you get used to making it, you know, then you're, you know, at a certain point at 10 calls or 20 calls or whatever the number is, you're going to get over that fear of making calls. So the only way to handle that is just push through it. The longer you wait to make the calls, the harder it's going to be. So just go ahead and do it. Fear of door knocking. Now, I'm not big on door knocking. I know a lot of people do it. But, but, you know, sure, it's scary to walk up to somebody's house and just knock on the door and say, hey, you want to sell. My advice to you, if you're going to door knock, is when you go to the house, 
you know, go up, knock on the door, take a step back from the door. You don't want to, you know, invade somebody's space and really make it short. Don't try to, you know, right there on the spot, say, hey, I'm a buyer, sell me your house, whatever. You know, when they knock on the door, they open the door, just, you know, stay who you are and what you're doing. Hey, I'm a local real estate investor. I'm working on a deal in the area that I'm driving over to right now. Um, but I was going by your house and you were on my list or, you know, whatever, whatever reason you're there. And uh, just say, you know, I'm interested in talking to you about selling your house. I don't have time to talk right now, but I wanted to give you my number or my card or whatever and see if I could come back or we could hop on the phone at a later point and talk. Very non-intrusive. You're not trying to get them to commit to something right then or whatever. So if you're going to door knock, I would do it that way. I think it's a better approach than trying to go through a script and get in right then and sit down at their kitchen table and strike a deal. All right. So be door knocking be, you know, as unintrusive as you can. All right. Uh, fear of being double crossed. Uh, usually this is by a buyer, right? So you get a property under contract and your buyer wants to go see the, the, the property. And then you're afraid about, you know, them doing an in run around you right to the seller. The best way to, to handle this is work with investors in your area that have a good reputation, that have worked with other wholesalers and, and are used to how this plays through. If you get a property under contract and then throw it online, throw it on Craigslist or throw it on Zillow. And, you know, you don't know the buyer going out to look at the property, or whatever. This could very well happen to you. But um, the, the best way to prepare for this is to just vet your buyers, know that they're uh, legit, know that they're real investors, know that they're working with other wholesalers and you can avoid, you know, being double crossed. If it happens, it happens. Move on. Nothing you can do about it. Some people say, you know, file, you know, put a put a lien against the house once you get it under contract and all that stuff. You know what? Just just move on. Don't, you know, don't start suing people. This is going to give you a bad reputation. Somebody double crosses you, chalk it up to, you know what? I should have vetted them better and move on. Um, there, and, and that's the last bullet point, fear of buyer going direct. The double cross could be by a JV partner or whatever. But again, just work with people that have a good reputation in your market so you don't deal with that. All right. So, you know, quitting your day job and getting into wholesaling, you know, it should be a transition. You shouldn't just quit, you know, because a coach tells you you can make six figures or five figures a month or close three to five deals a month with their, you know, secret formula or whatever. This is going to be a learning period for you. So depending on your skill set, it might take, you know, you might close a deal your first month. It could take you six months. It's, you know, it just depends on how you know, committed you are to learning the process, right? And into building these skills. So let's talk about skills for a minute. Number one skill on my list of wholesalers, you've got to become a marketing expert. All right. So if you were coming from a, uh, another job, you, you know, you're the manager of a hardware store or, you know, you, you, you know, you have a bakery or whatever the thing is you might not have a lot of marketing skills, right? So you use a lot of things you got to learn, you know, how are you going to market for motivated sellers? Are you going to drive for dollars? Are you going to send mail? Are you going to cold call or whatever, whatever path you pick, and it can be multiples, but you should start with one, but whatever path you pick, you've got to get really good at it. How can I be the best, at this one thing? How can I be the best cold caller? How can I practice? How can I role play? How can I get the best list? And nobody thinks about that. You know, coaches will tell you, just get this list and make calls, right? Try to get better at it. You know, there you, you've, you've got to improve the skills, right? And, in, you know, and, and look at what's going to work best for you. When I started, I didn't want to make phone calls. I'd done that for years, you know, in the mortgage industry, anything. So driving for dollars was really appealing for me. Just get in the car, go look for houses. I put notes on the door, whatever. That was best for me. When I first tried to do mailings, I screwed up by sending just to absentee owners with no other criteria. So, you know, you, you, as you pick things, you know, research them, 
do them the best you can and then try to improve on them. All right. So, but marketing is a huge part of this job because that's what a wholesaler is. He goes out, finds properties for an investor at a discount, right? And there's skill involved in that. All right. So next is skip tracer. You know, this, once you find a house, you have to track down the owner, especially if it's vacant and the owner doesn't live there. And maybe you have a hard time finding them. You know, software is getting better. You know, you've got Deal Machine and PropStream and everything that's got ownership information. Back in the day, we had to go to the tax, you know, county, to the tax records, look them up, try to find their phone number online, all this stuff. It's getting better, but you still have to be an expert at tracking people down because some people are hard to find. And the harder they are to find, the better the deal is. So you have to learn that skill. Uh, you have to learn to negotiate. You know, I'm going to one of the bullet points is coming up with numbers, but, you know, a negotiator, when you come up with your number, you know, you have to go out and explain and negotiate the deal. You have to say, you know, I know your house is worth or, you know, uh, you know, if your house is fixed up, it would be worth two hundred thousand dollars. But let you let me explain why my offer is only one hundred and forty. All right. And it, because it needs a roof and hasn't been updated since 1950 and the driveway needs to be replaced and all that. So you have to learn how to present your number and how to make them understand that what you're offering them is reasonable. I mean, you, you want it to be a win-win, all right? You don't want to go out and screw people but you need to get properties at a discounted price because of the condition they're in. So learning to negotiate is a skill that you have to learn. And, you know, you can read books on it and you can, you know, watch videos on it or maybe join a, you know, sign up for a course on it. But the best way to do it is to, you know, to practice it and, and, you know, you know, get in with somebody that maybe knows how to do it or whatever, but it's, but it's a skill that you're going to have to learn. Um, people and networking skills. A lot of people, you know, get into wholesaling, get into real estate and then realize, wow, I've got to I've got to talk to people, too. You know, I have Zoom meetings with real estate wholesalers and, you know, you get people that are afraid to turn their camera on on their computer in a Zoom meeting. OK, if you're going to get into real estate and you're going to be an investor, this is a people business and it's a relationship business and you've got to be OK with talking to people and building rapport with people. So if you're an introvert, you, you've got to you've got to work through it, and you've got to get used to being able to communicate, to being able to build relationships, and all that. So be aware of it. If especially if you're an introvert, you're going to have to talk to people. Um, home inspector and photographer, you know. You don't have to be like a licensed home inspector, but you have to, when you go to a property, you have to really work at spotting what's wrong with the property, right? You want to take, you know, you want to take a look at the good stuff, but you also really want to focus on the bad stuff. Is the driveway cracked? Does it need a roof? Is the chimney broken? Is, you know, the front stairs crumbling? Is the the furnace there? Is a hot water tank there? Is the electric wiring still there because a lot of times in in you know bad neighborhoods people will break in and just steal the copper wiring out of the house so you've got to pay attention and see if if something's missing right then you've you know so when you're walking through the property you've got to pay attention to all that and you've got to take photos of all that because when you're sending photos to a investor you're like here's the property i've taken 127 pictures of everything to do with this property you're taking a picture of the driveway and the steps and the windows and and the roof and the furnace and the, the rooms and and everything the sink whatever you can think of you're taking a picture of as you go through so when you find a buyer, you can say, hey, I'll send over the file with all the pictures in it. A lot of times I would do video, too, as I was walking through and also send them a link to the video. All right. So you have to be a good, you know, like I say, home inspector, photographer. You're you're you're, you're just looking for everything wrong with the property, everything right with the property. So also, when you're taking pictures, you want to take pictures of the broken things as well as a good marketing pictures. So you can take a nice picture of the front, of the sides, of the back and all that stuff, right? Without, you know, trash or garbage or trash cans in it, right? You want to, you know, make it look good, but also take pictures of the bad things as well. And then lastly, uh, property valuation and rehab uh, estimator. Um, you, you know, it's, it's not 
as hard as you think to come up with property valuations. I mean, you can go on the major platforms like Zillow and and Redfin, uh, Realtor.com and get average values for a property and take three values. And, and basically you're going to know what that property is worth. Now, some people debate that number on Zillow or whatever, but you just need to be close. You're never going to be spot on accurate. You just want to get into the ballpark. Same with rehab estimations. You are not a contractor. You're not a rehab estimator by trade. So you just want to ballpark numbers, okay? Needs a roof, okay? What's a roof cost? A roof cost six grand, seven grand. You know, find out what roofs cost in your area. You know, same with driveways. You know, what's it, what's it cost to replace a driveway per square foot? You know, call a cement, you know, re, a driveway contractor and just ask them. I'm going to go to a property and look at a driveway that's all busted up. How can I figure out the cost without having you guys come out and look at it? You know, is there a square footage that I can, you know, estimate that I can go by? But, you know, when you go into a room, what's the cost to paint a room in a house? 200 bucks. So figure for every room that needs to be painted, 200 bucks, right? Get a little checklist and just go through it. Okay. Roof's good shape. Driveway needs to be replaced. You know, six rooms need to be painted, needs flooring, but just have a ballpark per square foot number that you can use and just ballpark it. Because I'll tell you what the truth is, is anybody that you sell the property to, they're going to have their own method of rehabbing. Some will, you know, they'll just, you know, throw a coat of paint on, call it a day. Other ones are going to gut it and, and put in granite countertops. So you don't know what their rehab is going to cost. You just kind of have to come up with a baseline, okay? But those are all fears and skills that you have to deal with when you're getting into wholesaling. And as you can see by this list here, if you're brand new to this, you're not going to learn this in a week, all right? It's going to take you some time to get over these fears and build these skills. So if anybody tells you that you, you know, you you have no experience, but I'm going to show you how you can make, you know, five figures in the first 30 days, you know, don't count on that. Don't quit your job. All right. Ease into it, learn the skills, get over the fears. And, and I'll tell you, real estate business is a great business. You can make a lot of money investing. You can make a lot of whole money wholesaling, but you just need to take your time have your head on right about it and, and do the right thing. Okay. So I hope this helps and I'll talk to you guys soon.